Is anyone an expert on Fisker ADAS? No. And even though I admit I don't know much, I have read the entire manual. And you can too, if you're crazy like me. The entire manual's right here, including an exclusive video on just the ADAS system, also in the description. So what do we know? Well, first off, the ADAS features are not complete. And secondly, they're not included on the lower trims. Thirdly, the parts of the ADAS system that are complete are hidden from you if you're looking for them in the owner's manual. And the ones that are there don't really have much to do with driver assistance at all. It's way closer to mitigation and safety than assistance. But for more on that, let's take a drive. Yep, here she is, 14,000 miles and one tire rotation later. I also replaced the paint protection film on the rear doors, and I've ceramic coated it as well. And then there's the incident with the garage. For more on that, you can check out my detail channel with the garage nightmare still to come. And a sub to that channel would be spotless. The first time I drove a Model Y, it was a loaner from a friend. I was using its ADAS features as much as I could to test them, of course, and it performed a phantom braking event so aggressively that my wife said because of it, she would never drive a Tesla. That was June of 2021. We got our Model 3 in September and our Model Y two months later in November of 2021. So 18 months of ownership later, let's talk about that double tap. Let's all get on the same page together first. And to do that, we need a glossary of terms. We'll start with the most traditional, cruise control. My 2012 Toyota RAV4 has cruise control. You go down here and you click the little button here to turn on your cruise control. The icon gives a perfect description of what it does. It selects a speed and sticks to it. Fisker calls this drive control, but that doesn't change what it is. It's cruise control. Next is lane keep assist. Lane keep assist uses a front facing camera to know when to intervene if you begin to drift out of your lane. Lane keep assist is not active, it's passive. If then. We don't really cover intelligent speed assist in this video, but I have a video that does. And if you want to know what intelligent speed assist is, well, so that means there's just two left, adaptive cruise control and lane centering control, at least for this video. Adaptive drive control maintains speed and distance between ocean and vehicle ahead at highway speeds. Adaptive drive control based on the description Fisker provides is TAC for your Tesla or traffic aware cruise control. You don't have to put your feet on the pedals. It will speed up to your selected speed and slow down for any traffic in front of you, but it won't stop at stoplights, stop signs, or recognize road markings. Lane centering control keeps ocean in center of lane. Lane centering control would be all the features of adaptive drive control that I just described, plus the double tap on the stock for a standard autopilot Tesla. That's when you get the blue lines on the screen, your car is gonna actively center itself in the lane, and it will maintain speed based on traffic ahead. Okay, now we can talk real world experience. I did an in-depth video on these terms. You can check it out in the description. No matter what anyone tells you about autopilot, it's great, but it's not perfect. It is a huge improvement over any kind of traditional cruise control, and it's the best out there compared to other brands. With the scroll wheel, I'll call it a hard turn, but three clicks or more will give you five miles an hour at a time, and then you can fine adjust with one click up or down. The five mile an hour adjustments are extremely satisfying. I'd say I do 80% of my driving more than five miles away from the house with adaptive cruise and the scroll wheel. And I've done some road trips. In fact, since I work from home, almost all of the Model Y driving I do is road trips. So let me talk you through them. The first time I got my Tesla, we drove to New Martinsville and I actually did a phantom braking test during that trip because the phantom braking events were so frequent. It was disappointing. go phantom braking right there on camera but it was also a very challenging two-lane road and i was probably the first tesla ever to drive on it all of those things have changed so much we drove to ocean city maryland in april in a single day that's right i drove 16 and a half hours so we could have dinner on the beach and we had no phantom braking events also autopilot was so good i was able to drive 16 and a half hours with essentially a two-hour break halfway through the reason you can't use autopilot all the time in my state is simply potholes. Potholes there for the other reason I didn't want to engage just yet. The only time I disengage autopilot on a long trip is because I'm going to hit an obstacle in the road if I don't. I do a lot of work, however, with the scroll wheel. 
Setting the adaptive cruise on a back road in West Virginia and using the scroll wheel, we've got a larger turn coming up here. You can do that by rolling it down to 40, getting ready for it. Then as we approach it, we can roll another five off here, then slow here, and then make the turn. It is a foot off the pedals solution that is 99.9% .9 effective. Roll it back up to 45. Around here, the roads, not the traffic, present the challenges. The scroll wheel is a great relief for any road I'm familiar with. I got road work coming up in one mile, so I'll want to do some additional slowing. That'll be a 55 zone. So we can do some fine adjusting to kind of make an early approach at that. 62, 61, 60. Now I'm only five miles an hour away, so it's one quick roll and we'll be in 55. Because I don't have full self-driving, I can't leave my lane when I'm on autopilot on the highway. Here's your autopilot lane change. I know I'm coming up on a vehicle going slower than me. So I'm going to blink, disengage. So I engage the blinker and then use my steering wheel force to disengage the autopilot, which if it hasn't listed that in an update that it's changed, in my opinion, that disengagement is much softer and less jarring to the passengers. Once I've made my pass, I simply apply the blinker, move back into the other lane, and double tap the stick. I never have to touch the pedals. And a big blinker again. And then double tap. It's that simple. Wipers is another issue. I keep my vehicle very clean. I detail cars professionally, so I want to set a good example with my own vehicle. Because of this, a lot of the wiping done during autopilot, especially in light rain, is unnecessary. I find myself disengaging it in the rain for the most part. Usually, my windshield is clean enough and slick enough that I don't need wipers at all unless the rain is very heavy. And for those that don't know, you cannot change the setting of your wipers when you've engaged any driver assistance system in the Tesla. Adaptive Cruise, it's gonna run the wipers however it wants. Autopilot, it's gonna run the wipers however it wants. I do have the Tesla Vision system, so the cameras are the only source of input for the ADAS system. Therefore, it has to keep the windshield as clean as it can. We drove to Clifton Mills near Columbus, Ohio, and we had one phantom braking event. It was on the way home at the crest of a hill. Phantom braking events no longer beep every single time in a Tesla, so I just applied the accelerator about halfway through the braking event, and it went on with no issue. When we drove to the Outer Banks in North Carolina, I had no phantom braking events that I can recall. It was a thousand mile trip. The other secret to avoiding phantom braking events that I know is to avoid speeding. If you're not pushing the vehicle, it has more time to respond and survey the landscape, which I believe prevents phantom braking situations from occurring as often. But the difference between 2021 and 2023 with regards to autopilot can definitely be described accurately as night and day. There have been so many improvements and I feel like every update it gets just a little bit better. I've never really had the desire to try full self-driving until recently, but if autopilot is this good, I am curious now to find out what full self-driving can do. My previous car was also a plug-in vehicle. It was a Honda Clarity, and it had adaptive cruise with lane keep assist. The difference between lane centering and lane keep assist is drastic. Lane keep assist is something you can use to look down if you need to open a console or look away because you need to press the stereo, but it is not to be trusted to navigate the vehicle. Responses are late at best and scary in other situations. The only good thing to be said about the Fisker Ocean is that lane keep assist and cruise control are separate functions. That way cruise control can be used without applying lane keep assist and vice versa. Also standard cruise control and lane keep assist is very limited as you must be at a high enough speed and there must be lane lines for it to function properly. Another interesting tidbit is that lane keep assist 
and lane departure warning, when available, will automatically be active every time you start a new drive. So if you don't like it, you'll have to change the settings each time. My other concern with the Fisker 8S system is speed reduction. If the Ocean doesn't have one pedal driving, it also means it doesn't have that aggressive level of regen, which means even a feature complete Fisker Intelligent Pilot won't be able to brake using the motors exclusively, which is disappointing. As a major reason why Adaptive Cruise is so smooth in electric vehicles is that ability to utilize regenerative braking as the primary way to slow the vehicle. So this was a viewer suggested video and I hope I've shed some more light on your concerns. Let me know in the comments below if you've had different experiences or if you have any additional question about the Teslas or the Fisker Ocean's ADAS system. I'll do my best I can to answer all of them. Check out some other Easter eggs I found in the manual right here and answers to your questions right here. Subscribe for more. See ya in the next one. Hey, smash the like button. Thank you.